So what I'm going to do now is go through some of the steps involved with building a Rhino surface model of a detergent bottle. And I've chosen this downy fabric softener model for the demonstration. It's a pretty tricky one. Um, there are easier ones, and I suggest everybody find a, a bottle that's a good fit with your skill level and ambitions for the program. Um, and what we're aiming for with this is to get to a model that's pretty much uh, this level of detail and resolution. It's a fairly accurate surface model. Um, and it doesn't need to have too much detail. You know, a lot of this has been simplified so that uh, filleted edges are actually just treated as creases, and there's not much more information than just the kind of overall surface form. And the way that I got to this was by building a kind of wireframe armature, uh, a series of curves that allow me to develop a series of um, surfaces which can then be joined together. And the way that this is done, um, and there's a number of ways that you can go about modeling uh, with Rhino, and this is just one technique that I'm showing. And the way that I did it was to start with um, orthographic photographs of the of the bottle. Um, so basically plans, elevations, uh, you could actually, it might be better to have all the elevations and even the, the bottom plan, the, the kind of underside of it, to to give you all the information to work with, and then lay them out so that um, everything is arranged, uh, essentially lined up as best as possible. Um, and then what we can do is we can take this in to Rhino. Um, so let's open up a new window, and I'll do this all in inches. Um, and then in the front view, I'm just going to drop the image into the front view um, by going up to View, Background Bitmap, Place. Um, and I'll grab that image that I was just showing you and just I'm going to bring it in at no particular scale and one thing you'll notice is that it tends to fall behind the grid um, and that can be a little bit annoying so um, if you go up to tools options uh, grid turn all of that off and now what we want to do is get this to an accurate scale and um, I'm just going to maximize the front window so what I'll do is I'm just going to create a couple of reference lines and um, actually just make these the same length. So I'm going to copy that one up and I can just measure this. So it's telling me it's like 150 inches and I know that this bottle is about 12 inches tall. So what I can do is I can draw a 12 inch line and then I can scale the image using this as a reference point and this and then scaling it back to that by going to view background bitmap scale and then set this as the origin that would be my second click and then I'd scale it all the way back to there so that I know that that's my 12 inch line and so now of course when I measure from there to there it's essentially 12 inches so this way I've got everything at a scale that's workable I'm working at one to one the next step, and it's going to be tricky, I mean all of this is going to be hard getting the wireframe set up, um, and I'll get things started uh, and then we'll kind of jump back over to the other file, but um, the best way to do this is to kind of start with what we know, which is that if you were to cut a section through here, it would basically give you this profile that we're seeing. Um, so we know that we can trace that, and that's maybe the, the best starting point, and we're just going to kind of simplify this you know, we know that that's supposed to be straight. There's always going to be a little bit of lens distortion. Um, and we'll just kind of ignore that. Um, so, so we'll get rid of... Well, we'll hold on to that for right now. Um, using the um, interpolate curve command, I'm just going to trace this outer edge. And again, I'm just going to kind of simplify it. I'm not even going to deal with the way that it curves under like that. I'm just going to let it come to a crease. And then draw a straight line that comes across. And I can trim this stuff a little bit later. Um, this edge right here is maybe about like that. And then I'll switch to an interpolated curve. go to about there, trim that, and then I'll get this inner part of the handle as well. I 
You can always go back and adjust these if you feel like the curves aren't right, or you can do an undo. If you undo in the middle of it, it'll get rid of your last point until you get the kind of curvature that you're looking for. Okay. Um, so that's a good start. I'm just going to ignore this top part for right now and just kind of end it right there. Um, I'll get rid of that, actually. So now when I switch to my perspective, so that's only going to show up in my front view, the image. So that's kind of like a section cut um, right through the middle of it, um, based on the kind of symmetry of the bottle. So that's a good starting point. And um, so some other things that I know are that um, this top piece is round. It's like a cylinder. So I could actually just say that I could extrude that. Um, actually, no, we'll just leave it as wires for right now. Um, so I can start to add in, you know, I'll go from the quad to the quad, quad to quad, to quad. So I'm starting to kind of fill this stuff out. Um, so let's see, what else do I know? Um, so I know, so this piece right here goes kind of something like that and um, so this is where it gets a little bit weird because that's going to show up in the front view and so I actually need to rotate that around 90 degrees and then I can pull it over and put it probably goes about like right there um, so I'm starting to fill that part out a little bit and then um, here's where it starts to get a little bit tricky is that what I want to do is I want to start to trace some of these curved pieces um, and do it both in elevation and in plan. So in elevation, say I start to trace this around. And here, I'm really just interested in the part that I would see in plan. So there's a certain point where I'm going to have to end it. So we'll end it right there, because I'm not going to see this curve in plan. I'm only going to see it right there. And let's draw this same piece in the plan. So if I pull a line up like that, I'll start right there. I'm just going to trace this around, following the shadows that are on there. It looks like it might end about like right there, and I can actually just project this up and try to get these to match. So I'm going to turn the control points on on this guy slide him over a little bit and we move that one up and you know we're just trying to get kind of close for right now okay so what I've got is I've got a curve drawn in plan and I've got a curve drawn in elevation and then what I want to do is I want to take this I actually want to rotate it so that it's drawn in so that it actually matches up. Since we're doing everything kind of over here in the same views, I want to kind of get it into the right orientation. And now I can do an interesting trick, which is called curve from two views. So if I take the plan curve and the elevation curve, and go up and do curve from two views, what it's going to do is it's going to blend the two together and it's going to figure out its three-dimensional shape. So that's this one right here. So now I can actually go back and I can delete that, and I can delete that. And so what's nice is that you can see that that curve still shows up accurately in elevation, but it starts to have this three-dimensional shape. Um, okay, I'm going to break right here, and then we'll pick up again in a second.